Welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily. My name is Aaron. This is a video that you do not want to miss. Take a look at your screen right now. This is what we're going over in today's video. Different charts, different metrics, different perspectives, whether you're a cryptocurrency enthusiast or a cryptocurrency investor like myself. Hopefully this video and content in general on this channel, but hopefully this video sets you up for a successful 2021 and a successful 2020 decade. It is very important that you stay in tune with the cryptocurrency market every day. Be as informed as possible. This is the wild, wild west. This is the 1990s for the dot-com bubble. You only get one shot at this and you don't want to screw it up. And it's very easy to get bearish at the lows. Did you notice that when Bitcoin was 32,000, 31,000, 30,000, 29,000 for weeks and weeks and months and months, almost everybody in cryptocurrency turned bearish. We had a counter narrative. We were showing you data for months and months saying this is a trap. Be ready. Cryptocurrency investors are still being fooled. We put out a series of these videos. So hopefully, hopefully you made some good moves in cryptocurrency, my friends, because Bitcoin is up, Ethereum is up. These are market movers. This is what we like to see. Meme coins are up. Dogecoin is shining. And this is good. Even coins with good fundamentals are up. I mean, I, Dogecoin can pump in bull markets. That's great. But I like to see coins with better fundamentals, actual people using these networks. These are the coins that I like to see doing well. And when we say top DeFi tokens, what we mean is the quote unquote blue chips, right? The Aves, the Sushi Swaps, the Uniswaps. And uh, before we get to our charts and metrics today, keep in mind, you know, it could have easily gone a little bit lower. Anything could happen in cryptocurrency. Nobody knows the future. We're all just trying to do our best. But I'm very thankful that I bought the dip and didn't sell the bottom. Because people who were short Bitcoin, let me tell you something. These guys just got wrecked. Take a look at this. This just happened. Almost 100 billion worth of shorts liquidated over the past 24 hours during the Bitcoin breakout. That means people who were short Bitcoin at the bottom got wrecked, meaning they lost their money and even had to buy Bitcoin back at a more expensive price to cover their shorts. In fact, 1.11 billion, almost 100,000 accounts have been liquidated. 846 million of which is Bitcoin. Guys, the bears are getting wrecked. I love it. And also keep in mind, because we, you know, nothing is ever black and white to try and prepare you guys for, to be in this for the long game, to mean this for years, like myself, you know, the shorts, they're not out of trouble yet. We still have much more shorts to purge. Let the cleansing begin. And, you know, as we climb to greater all-time highs, this market's going to go in ebbs and flows, right? It's going to go up and down. It's going to retest what was resistance, now support. It's going to break through resistance. You know, this is why we're here, guys. With volatility comes opportunity. But the coins that actually have use, the coins that are getting users... I'm so bullish on cryptocurrency. If you know somebody who still does not own Bitcoin, who still does not own Ethereum, show them what we're about to talk about in the next five or six tabs. If I was going to do a presentation on Bitcoin to either a corporation, an institution, an organization, anybody really, either internal or external, I would lead with just one chart. This chart. This chart is something that every executive, every project manager, every allocator, etc., regardless of the industry, will see. They will clock this and understand that this is a big deal. And what this is, is quite simple. It's Bitcoin supply held by entities who control 0.1 Bitcoin to just one whole Bitcoin, going back all the way to when Bitcoin was first created. And what you will notice is no matter if we're in the final parts of the bull market or years of an extended bear market, what you'll notice is that people are accumulating more and more people, different people, a greater number of people every year hold small amounts of Bitcoin. This is going back all the way to 2010. We can zoom in on just this year and it shows the same thing. When Bitcoin's going up, people are accumulating. When Bitcoin's going down, people are accumulating. This is huge. So them, so you're telling me that for the past 10 years, regardless of press or price, these people just kept buying me. Actually, it's more impressive than that. As soon as they acquire one Bitcoin or more, they fall off this chart. So they're being replaced by others that are doing 
the same thing. So incredibly bullish on Bitcoin. Bitcoin has plenty more upside. The more time passes, the more bullish I get. And I'm bullish on Ethereum, especially with how fundamentally strong Ethereum is looking going in to ETH 2.0. 200,000 plus validators staking 6.6 .6 million Ethereum, equivalent to 15.4 billion worth of Ethereum, is now securing the beacon chain, getting ready for ETH 2.0. So let's talk about the strength of both Bitcoin and Ethereum from a network perspective. A network is only as strong as its users, Metcalf's Law, we've talked about this before, Raul Paul's a big proponent of Metcalf's Law. So just an update of our favorite crypto charts. Here is a log chart parallel of Bitcoin today in white versus Bitcoin cycle in 2013, the blue. Still fits decently well. This is good. This is what we like to see. Here is the non-log version. So this is the same chart except non-log pretty much perfect from a contextualization standpoint. Again, this is what we like to see. Current Bitcoin versus the cycle in 2013, which was the double pump. We might see something like that happen again. Now let's talk about Ethereum. Ethereum is about, what, five, six years, came five years later than Bitcoin. So let's compare ETH today versus Bitcoin in its previous cycle, 2017. Also pretty decent. The blue is Ethereum today. The white is Bitcoin. This is it in its last cycle going into today. Ethereum has similar network growth that Bitcoin did last cycle. The network grows like this. Why wouldn't you be bullish? So regardless of the drama on Twitter, the tether, the China, the environment, the social, the government, the crap coin scam or Elon Musk, everything is normal in crypto world and just moving along. Metcalf's law adoption curve. So this is us today. This is us projected into the future as these metrics, you know, increase like they've been for the past 10 years. And it's comparing total crypto users today in millions to total global internet users in millions from 1992 to 2006. We're doing better than the internet. And unlike back then, everybody has a computer, everybody has a cell phone. So it's very easy to opt into this, unlike back in the day when you had to buy a computer or buy a cell phone or whatever. So let's talk about the future of cryptocurrency. You know, we were just referencing Raul Paul, as you recall, a few days ago, we featured an interview he did talking about how social tokens will be the next big thing in cryptocurrency. Check this out if you haven't seen it. But I mean, if you take a look at what's going on, you can kind of see that is where this space is going. The Cleveland Cavaliers basketball team joins fan token platform Socios. Socios, the blockchain-based platform which has tokenized many sports franchises worldwide, has partnered with the National Basketball Association's Cleveland Cavs. In a Monday announcement from blockchain-based sports platform Chili's Socios, they said their logo will be prominently featured on Cavs team jerseys for the upcoming season scheduled to begin later this year. The platform also said it was currently in the review and development phase for fan engagement elements for the team, purportedly referring to tokens or digital collectibles. My friends, you can see what's coming. Quote, this is the start of an exciting partnership that we believe can eventually lead to greatly enhanced fan engagement for fans of the Cavaliers around the world. Many basketball franchises have already inked partnership deals with Socios. Earlier this month, the firm announced a similar arrangement for branding and a digital presence with the Boston Celtics basketball team. The Philly 79ers joined the fan token platform in June. Partnerships with U.S.-based sports teams as part of Socios' expansion to North America, where it plans to open a regional office in the near future. Future. So check out this video from a few days ago if you want to learn more about this. And finally, my friends, like I said, I always like to give you the complete picture. Regulations are coming and people who have businesses in cryptocurrency are preparing for regulations. And regulations are not a bad thing. Regulations are a good thing. That means this thing is getting so big that they have to regulate it. They have to define the rules. And regulation equals game on. Regulation means they're not going to ban it. They're regulating it. And have you noticed the string of companies we have seen preparing for this? FTX reduces leverage from 100x to 20x. Binance reduces leverage from 100x to 20x. Uniswap front end delists certain assets that may be construed as unregistered securities. Aave rolling out an Aave Pro version with KYC with AML. Texas, New Jersey, Alabama takes stances against BlockFi, questioning them. Again, 
it's good that these companies are preparing for incoming regulations and regulations are not bearish they're ultimately bullish because this thing just keeps getting bigger subscribe to the channel we update you on a daily basis anything could happen in cryptocurrency we'll always tell you our latest thoughts on any given day either changing our opinions or reaffirming our opinions or just sharing greater information in general it's going to be a great week let's do it big